Why should I have to study the Bible? I can Google anything I want. New research reveals that Americans love the Bible, but not enough to read it. A LifeWay survey found that while most households have at least three Bibles, only 53% of Americans actually read them. Josh, what do you make of these survey results that Americans say they love the Bible, but less than half actually read it? It's very similar, the LifeWay study, to the Barna study, almost identical, which is, shows that it's true. I think probably there's three three or four main reasons that a lot of people don't think about, and it has to do with the information glut, the introduction of the internet. Let me show you what I mean. The average adolescent, this is average adolescence, takes in 34 gigabytes of data every 24 hours from a moving screen, which means if uh, printed out, it would equal 4.5 million pages. The brain of millennials and younger, it's overloaded. And as a result, it's creating a tremendous intellectual skepticism. Uh, when people came out with the internet, everybody was saying, oh, wonderful, it's gonna add such certainty, data, evidence, information. And I kept saying, no, it'll add the greatest intellectual skepticism ever. For example, you go even to a Christian young people group with me or to a middle school, high school, college campus. Doesn't matter if you're a Christian or not, and you make a dogmatic statement about the Bible is the only word of God or Jesus Christ is the only son of God. Almost always you get a response like this. Well, how do you know that's true? There's so much out there. Tomorrow they could discover something different. As a result, the Bible is becoming less and less important as a source of data or information about life. And those are two of the reasons um, that we're having to shift away from reading the Bible. But look at this one. One of my staff, she has a 13-year-old daughter, and the um, youth pastor was trying to get her to study the Bible more, do her homework, do her research and all. And this was her response. Now think of this. Why should I have to study the Bible? I can Google anything I want. Mm. You get it? Wow. That's what's happened with the information that we get from the internet. It's amazing. Well, Josh, if we call ourselves a Christian nation, but don't read the Bible, what does that say about us? Well, one, I'm not sure I would call myself a Christian nation. I think we've shifted from what Francis Schaeffer said was a post-Judeo-Christian culture. We have now shifted in to an anti Judeo-Christian culture. And what you mean by Judeo-Christian culture is that your ethics, your morals, your perspective of life would stem from the Old Testament Judaic and the New Testament Christian. We're now in a culture of anti-Judeo-Christian. Diet sodas boast fewer calories, but a new study shows they could increase your chances of dementia and stroke. The lead researchers say the study can't establish a cause and effect between the drinks and the possible diseases, but it does suggest more work be done on the effect diet drinks have on the body. Faith groups and Christian businesses had hoped President Trump would reverse the Obamacare mandate that requires employers provide birth control to their employees but the Trump administration has not signaled what it plans to do. Christian business owner David Green of Hobby Lobby sued to keep his business from having to follow the mandate and won, yet because it hasn't been repealed, he says it may face more legal battles. You know, I think it's all gonna come down to the Supreme Court eventually. Uh, that's where most of these decisions are gonna finally be made. So for us, it's really getting a Supreme Court that is pro-family, pro, -family, pro uh, faith and, and will allow us to have our religious liberties. Sorry to say the average American is about 20 pounds heavier than 40 years ago and more than one in three is obese. The test dummy has been used in crash after crash. 
For nearly 50 years, this 5 foot 9 inch, 170 pound dummy has been the standard. Safety features, the airbags, and most importantly, the seat belts are des designed around those dummies. But with Americans getting taller, fatter, and older, changes are needed, according to Dr. Stuart Wang from the University of Michigan's International Center for Automotive Medicine. Heavier people uh, seem to get much more severe uh, lower extremity injuries. It's pretty easy to tell which is the, the new big dummy. Yes, our obese dummy. Christopher O'Connor runs Humanetics, the leading maker of crash test dummies. He says this new dummy, about 100 pounds heavier and a few inches taller, is more like a real modern day driver. We have found that obese people, elderly people, people who don't fit that exact size and shape are more at risk in a vehicle now. Do they need to switch to a larger dummy as the standard? So I don't think one replaces the other. Auto safety is based on what we measure. We need to have a test device that reflects that growing population change. With nearly 20% of drivers over 65, O'Connor and Dr. Wang are also developing a crash dummy to replicate an elderly, more fragile body. Unfortunately, the older population is four to eight times more likely to sustain chest injuries than a younger individual. While it will take years to get regulatory approval, car makers are already giving this big guy a test run to see if a bigger dummy means better safety. Benny Hinn Ministries has released a statement after federal agents raided the Texas headquarters of the ministry Wednesday and were seen taking boxes of documents away. Benny Hinn Ministries says it, quote, is cooperating fully with the governmental entities that are reviewing certain operations of the church. The ministry has undergone intense scrutiny over the years and we remain confident that there will again be a positive and speedy outcome in the days ahead, end quote. A federal source told Dallas TV station WFAA that the raid was the result of a lengthy IRS investigation. I'll get him. I'll catch that guy. CMPD officers chased James Yarbrough for about four minutes after he took off running from a traffic stop last March. It took multiple officers to catch him. This is what happened when they did. Stop! I will kill you. That's a gun on the left side of the screen, pressed to Yarbrough's head, and an officer threatening to kill him. I will kill you. The only thing I did wrong that day was run. That is the only thing I did wrong that day. Do you, do you regret doing that? Yes, 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 yeah, 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 I regret, I regret running. Oh, hey, 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 come here. Police stopped a car Yarbrough was a passenger in because they say it was connected to a string of larcenies. Yarbrough, who's been convicted three different times on federal firearms charges, says he ran because he knew the driver of the car had a gun, something he says he didn't want to be pinned on him. But he says he wasn't expecting the force officers used when they finally caught him. That moment felt like, you know, it felt like it might have been my last, you know, my last day. Yarbrough and the officers struggled for another three minutes after the gun was put to his head. The video shows officers punching and elbowing him in an effort to get his hands behind his back until, at one point, an officer points out Yarbrough can't move because of the four men on top of him. Guys, Dunham, you have to come up so he can get it back there. He's not, he's, not, he's not going anywhere. That has all of the features of excessive use of force. We showed the video to attorney Jake Sussman, who represents clients in police brutality cases. Sussman said this body cam video would make for a compelling case in court that officers used excessive force. I think if you show that to 12 people on the street, they would certainly think that there was a problem. It certainly seems like that was an unreasonable use of force. You and the department stand behind Officer Dunham's behavior in yes. that video. We do. But the police say otherwise. Major Stella Patterson heads the department's internal affairs unit. She says the officers in the video didn't do anything wrong. When you look completely at the totality of the circumstances, you have to ask yourself, was that reasonable in that situation? And based on everything, it was reasonable. It's reasonable for a police officer to take his pistol and put it up against the temple of someone's head and say that they'll kill that person? Depends on the situation. Um, you have to look at it in totality. When you went to the police academy, were you taught that it's appropriate or uh, okay to press your gun up against someone's head and say, I will kill you? I don't know that we were taught to press the gun up against somebody's head. Um, we were taught that you could point the weapon, and we see that Mr. Um, Officer Dunham does that in the video. That's hard to swallow. People die as a result of that. People are manhandled as a result of that. And that is, whether that's training, whether that's culture, uh, within the department, it 
it's terrifying. What would you say to those police officers who were on the ground with you that day? I don't know what I'll say to him. I really don't. Would you say what happened to you was justice? No. What no. would you call that? Um, a beating. The deep state is the notion that there is a network of career government employees who are secretly manipulating government policy. They could have positions in the military, intelligence agencies, or other areas of government. Many write the deep state off as a conspiracy theory because no evidence of an organized effort has surfaced. The phrase was originally used to refer to power dynamics in foreign countries like the former Soviet Union. The term began gaining traction during the 2016 presidential race and became prominent after Trump's election. Perhaps ABC News, if it wasn't a CIA operation itself, should have dug a little further into their archives. The evolution of the deep state reads like a U.S. history book. In 1947, Harry S. Truman created the CIA by signing the National Security Act. Founding members of the CIA included Skull and Bones member Prescott Bush and the dynamic duo Alan Dulles and John Foster Dulles. Hastily, the Office of Policy Coordination was formed in 1940. Radio Free Europe in 1949, Operation Mockingbird in the 1950s, where at least 25 media organizations and 400 journalists immediately became CIA assets. MK Ultra mind control operations began around 1953. The 1961 deep state coup of our executive branch as Alan Dulles led the Operation Mongoose fiasco, resulting in the Bay of Pigs that nearly annihilated the United States. The JFK assassination which we will know more about the deep state's actual involvement as the 25th anniversary allows secret documents to be released in October of this year. The false Gulf of Tonkin narrative, the murder of over 20,000 Vietnamese civilians in Operation Phoenix, Operation Chaos, which tracked thousands of protesters and organizations, the Iran-Contra affair, the weapons of mass destruction lies to get us into the Iraq war and the deconstruction of the Middle East, and that is merely scratching the surface. It would be easier if uh, it were a conspiracy you're describing, but that's not the case, is it? This is something that hides in plain sight. It's kind of a natural evolution when so much money and political control is at stake in the most powerful country in the world. This has evolved over time. Well, it's all the national security functions of the government. It's the Pentagon. It's Homeland Security, it's the State Department, uh, it's also Treasury because they have a kind of symbiotic relationship with Wall Street. And here we are in 2017 as the deep state draws China and Russia into a great war over Syria and North Korea. Meanwhile, the continuity of government plan ensures that the deep state will keep rolling on as U.S. citizens are decimated due to one catastrophe or another. So you see, the deep state actually isn't a hidden organization or a conspiracy theory. It is a taxpayer-funded factory of death and subversion, producing the elite initiatives of the banker Wall Street class carried out by a group of well-known federal organizations that have officially molded U.S. history for the past 70 years by acting further and further outside of the U.S. Constitution as time goes by. In the councils of government, we must car guard against the acquisition of unwarranted influence, whether sought or unsought, by the military-industrial complex. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment.